Hey friends! I hope you're doing great! So the weekend started off pretty normal and beautiful as I visited my parents in our stunning South German countryside where nature is transitioning from spring to summer now. The weather is getting very warm and sometimes already hot. Every plant is rich and green and blooms. The cat gets lazy. And the tomato plants are so big already. I mean, can you remember how they were only little seeds two months ago when I put them into soil? Unbelievable! To cool down a little bit and get the benefits of some cold water barefoot walking therapy, I went down to the river next to our house and got into the stream that is still very icy. This is so refreshing and you also get massaged by the rounded river stones you walk on. Guys, I am so super excited because today I'm going to go to my grandparents and we are starting to plant the garden. <laughs> I'm so excited. The gardening season starts now in Germany. And well, how can you tell that it started? Well, there are the Icemen or the Frost Saints or Ice Saints here in Germany in the end of May. The celebration day of the Ice Saints are actually on the 11th till the 15th of May. There they are celebrated, but they mostly occur in the end of May, more on the 23 or 24 of May. It is a weather phenomenon that often occurs during this time. And it is always like three or five days where it gets really cold again and where we also can have some frost on the ground. So it's mostly in the middle or the end of May. Before it, it is usually already very warm in the beginning of May, so that's why it stands out. And the old custom says that after this singular cold and frost event, it's done. It is gone, the cold and frosty weather, so then the gardening season can start and all the plants can be planted outside. Not only in the planter, but in the garden itself. Now with climate change, this changes a little bit. In some years we don't have the ice saints and the ice men at all. And I think this year was such a year, it wasn't really cold and frosty, so... We kind of skipped it, <laughs> but nevertheless, it is a very good thing to wait until they are over because they come in most of the years or historically it was like that. So the ice saints themselves are mostly murderers or bishops of the 3rd to the 5th century and they are called Mamertus, Pankrats or Pankratius. Servatius, Bonifatius and Sophia, which is also called the Kalte Sophie or the Cold Sophie. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is the only girl amongst them. The others are male and uh, Sophie was actually a murderer. And the others, I think, I believe were mostly bishops and murderers sometimes. I try to understand why it is that this weather phenomenon always occurs during this time and they explained it as follows. So the continent is already heating up day by day and it's getting warmer and warmer in middle Europe. But in the north it is still very cold, very cold air masses. Somehow always around this time these air masses clash 
and the cold air masses from the north are traveling down to middle Europe. But why that really is exactly and why it always kind of occurs during this time in middle and end of May, it's not quite clear, you know, as I study geography, I uh, know a lot about this climate sciences and how um, everything works and the research works and what they know and what they don't know at this point and climate and weather is a very complicated thing. So we can not understand everything to the core at this point. But we know that this weather phenomenon of the Iceman occurs somehow nearly every year since hundreds and thousands of years. It is a very old knowledge. But now as we pass them, <laughs> we can go planting. My grandparents and I wanted to plant cucumber plants again. Grandma has already grown big salads and cabbage turnip in the cold frame. They soon can be harvested already. And also in my grandparents' garden many plants are flowering now. Such a delight! I can't get over this beauty and it's always so special to see nature bloom after the winter when everything seemed to be dead. I mean, it wasn't obviously, but I'm sure you get what I mean. We needed to prepare some birch sticks on which the cucumber plant can climb up. also told me that I should harvest all the lemon balm to take home with me and dry to tea. It's big already and when we cut it now for the first time we will get several more harvests during the summer and can stock up our lemon balm tea supply for the winter. You need to clean them out, which means to remove grass and dead leaves. Then you bind them into bundles so you can hang them upside down to dry. This way there won't grow any mold when you hang them in a dry room in a corner where air can circulate. My parents and I are making lots of ice cream since I got my parents a blender. It's delicious, healthy, vegan, fresh, easy to do, without added sugars and so simple. You just need ripe bananas and whatever else you want to put in. I enjoy the combination with frozen raspberries most. The bananas are sweet enough when they are ripe. I put some dark chocolate on it. It's just gorgeous. So guys, since two days I am home again in my flat and actually yesterday we well discovered that uh, my boyfriend catched COVID. So he wasn't feeling very well and he did a test in the morning before he went to work or he wanted to go to work he obviously <laughs> didn't and, and um, yeah it was positive so well he has symptoms so he's uh, sick now 
in my mind the pandemic was over somehow i have to admit <laughs> but yeah it's obviously not so okay now our mission is to get him healthy again and to keep me healthy <laughs> so we need to boost both of our immune systems now and as if my grandma and me would have known it <laughs> with um you know the herb we harvested we need it now it's strange sometimes right so one of his symptoms is that he has headache and I actually looked it up now and the lemon balm is very good for headaches, to cure headaches. <laughs> yeah, what? Uh, sometimes it's uh, strange. So I'm preparing a tea from it now and hopefully it will help a little bit. Obviously what I wanted to say, um, if you have really <laughs> strong symptoms, you should go to the doctor and I'm just showing you here what we do now to boost our immune systems and to help a little bit um, with natural things because it's not as bad at this point that we have to seek the doctor but if it gets worse we obviously do so just <laughs> that we get that out of the way and you don't have a wrong um, perception of everything. It rained the whole day, but now it stopped. <laughs> so I plan to go out and pick some wild herbs because they are healthy and I need some fresh air and I thought I can go to the forest because I don't meet anyone there <laughs> and I don't get too close to other people. So I'm going out now and pick some wild herbs for dinner. Because there is nothing better in May than fresh white herbs. They have their most powers now because they are fresh and growing. And yeah, why not use them <laughs> when you're sick now, right? So I arrived now at the wildflower field. I wanted to go to pick some wild herbs. <sighs> Here is my bike <laughs> and I got my rain clothes on in case it rains later because it's very rainy and cloudy today. And I mean the biggest difference between my home in the countryside and my home here in the city regarding to the wild herbs picking is that here I have to go a long long way to get some and in the countryside at my parents I just need to fall out of bed basically and go out the porch and pick them in the garden. But here it's different because I don't trust uh, the fields in the city obviously and I think you shouldn't. <laughs> so I have to go out of the city. I think this field it's the one I filmed my last video, by the way, the solo picnic video. This field is maybe five kilometers away from our place, our flat. So I have to get out and do some sports to get here. I actually enjoy both situations, like going in the garden and having your own wild herbs is obviously very wonderful, but also here. I mean, you know that I enjoy doing sports and I want to be a sporty person, so 
it's also okay for me to bike to get some wild herbs. And I mean this wonderful field full of flowers and different wild herb species. It's actually a weird thing to say, but here at the city, at the edge of the city in the forest, the meadows are just more biodiverse and more intact than at our place in the countryside because this is not a meadow for agricultural use. They don't put fertilizers or anything here. But in our countryside, the meadows are, of course, mostly agricultural. So there are not many species left with all the fertilizers. <laughs> Maybe dandelion and four or five other herbs, but you shouldn't pick them because you don't want to eat the cow poop and the fertilizers. <laughs> So in the countryside you actually rely on your garden for wild herbs at our place. Here it's different. You see, you can definitely live in the city and cultivate a very countryside-like natural lifestyle. It depends on the city of course. Here we have this big forest around and this wildflower fields, very beautiful, a huge protected nature area. And yeah, it's definitely also wonderful here. now and I want to prepare a healthy immune boosting dinner <laughs> as I did already yesterday. Yesterday I made a very healing vegetable soup of uh, herbs and all the spices that help with virus infections and today I wanted to prepare some rice with um, veggies and all the good stuff that has with the immune system <laughs> like the herbs we picked obviously and also when we are sick which doesn't occur that often fortunately we try to eat a lot of uh, ginger and also garlic <laughs> i love garlic i could eat it up all at once <laughs> and also onions and um, yeah spring onions everything like that so this prebiotic things that are really helping with digestion that are also antiviral antibacterial and yeah just good stuff so let's make a little healthy dinner
washed out by the rain. <laughs> I'm sorry, my Spanish is a little bit rusty. And I put some parsley on top because we want all the healthy greens now. And here we have a yogurt dip with it. It's with yarrow and black sesame. So I put all the yarrow in there. It's more than the garnish. I already mixed it a little bit. And we have this beautiful green salad with cucumber, pepper, the red clover and also the dandelion leaves. The green salad hides a little bit, but it's a lot in there. <laughs> if this doesn't get us healthy or keep us healthy, I don't know what will. So beautiful, lots of herbs. Thank you for watching friends! If you enjoyed, give this video a like and share it with someone who might like it as well. That helps my channel a lot and would make me very happy. I wish you the most wonderful week and great health for you and your loved ones. See you soon!